Hey, it's Kim and welcome back to Pokemon Breaks. Today we have another addition to the Artist Showcase series and I'm really excited to be talking about Saya Surata. Saya is one of the Pokemon Company's female illustrators and she's done over a hundred cards for the Pokemon TCG and she's been illustrating for Pokemon since Secret Wonders, which is quite some time. I'm really excited to talk about some of my favorite Saya Surata cards and if you have any other favorites or artists that you'd like to recommend for a future episode of this series, please leave them in the comments down below. If you like these kinds of videos and you're interested in the art of Pokemon, please subscribe because I make a new video every single week and I would love to have you here. Some of my favorite Saya Surata cards are her beautiful floral illustrations and she did a handful in her very early days that I think are definitely worth talking about. I absolutely love the gorgeous Shinx card from Breakpoint. It is the sweetest little artwork of Shinx just laying down in a meadow. It looks a little bit cheeky. It's a progression from her earlier artworks like the Cherim and Cherubi from Supreme Victors because you can see that she's included a lot more of an outline around the Shinx and the flowers. So it becomes a little bit more in depth with the artwork. I think that it does create a lot more contrast in the Shinx compared to some of her earlier cards. That being said, I think her earliest artworks like the Slowpoke, especially from Great Encounters, are really sweet and adorable. With the earlier cards that she's done, you can see that there's a lot more of a light blowout impact. So you can see that it's like a really sunny day and the outline's not necessarily needed. Whereas some of her more newer artworks like the Shinx, the outline is just adding a lot more depth and interest to the artwork. Comparing this to a few cards that she did for Breakthrough where she's really ventured out and done something quite different from the floral cards that I think become her mainstay as an artist. You've got the Gengar from Breakthrough, which is a really dark and creepy almost artwork. I think the background shows a lot of just sort of ghosts moving around. It's really kind of ethereal and it's got a really strong outline. It's almost got a graffiti style, which I really like. And the expression on Gengar's face is so devious. And I think that she's done really well of capturing that Pokemon and his energy, which is something that she does really well throughout her artistic journey. The other two cards that she did for Breakpoint, again, are quite different from the floral artworks that she became known for in the beginning. So you've got the Spupa and the Glameow. Again, both of the Pokemon are super expressive and she's done really well to create a really strong environmental factor that you can just sort of be where the Pokemon are. The Spupa is out in the snow, he looks kind of quizzical, confused, maybe a little bit concerned. The Glameow is sort of dark and spoopy and <laughs> really creepy. It looks like he's maybe out the front of a haunted house or guarding something important. So it's a little bit of a scary artwork, which again, it's just showing a lot of versatility for Saya, which I really like. Another card that Saya did that I really love that again just totally ventures out of that floral meadow sweet scene that we've sort of grown accustomed to seeing her for is the Magikarp promo that she did for XY. Um, it's a shiny Magikarp, it's got this really bright red and yellow sort of background. Um, there's not a huge amount of background detail or anything going on with it, but I think the amount of detail that she's put into the Magikarp is really cool. It's still super expressive, it's really interesting and just really different from what we've grown used to seeing from her. Same thing with the Alolan Vulpix from Burning Shadows. There's no flowers involved in this artwork, but I absolutely love the really soft color scheme. The quizzical look on Vulpix's face is super duper sweet and I love that you can see the sort of dawn sunshine hitting the clouds in the background. It is a really gorgeous card. Um, very expressive and really simple in terms of the color scheme and the limited background but you can see that there's a lot that's gone into it in terms of effort and love which is really lovely to see. A couple of other really beautiful floral meadow cards that Saya did for Sun and Moon that I absolutely love and just had to put in my collection because I enjoy them so much. She did an alternate art Eevee promo and this is one thing that I definitely had to have for my collection. You've got Eevee having the time of her life just traipsing through this gorgeous field of colorful flowers. I love the amount of depth that Saya created with this one with the flowers in the foreground as opposed to the background and I think the sky in this one is really beautiful as well. Similar to all of her other artwork 
weeks, the Pokemon is always really expressive, which is always really fun to see. You can see how much fun that Eevee's having. Um, similar to that more lol card that she did for Sun and Moon. This is kind of a funny story. I was looking at just random bulk cards to pick up in a card store and the more lol was something that just drew me in and I had to pick it up. I don't collect more lol. It's not one of my favorites, um, but for whatever reason, looking at this one, I think it's the soft outlining, the little glow um, around the Pokemon and the little spores that it's got just sucked me in and I just had to have it for my collection. Now, similar to the Cherim and Cherubi that we discussed already, Saya illustrated an Illumise and Volbeat card for Celestial Storm, and I think that this duet is just the cutest thing and I need it in my collection. Uh, you can see the Volbeat and the Illumise are both in kind of a flower meadow, but I think the two cards just fit together so perfectly and would display so nicely in a binder that I just need to find them and pick them up. Um, I think, again, with this one, you can see her creative style and her artistic ability is increasing as time goes on. The detail that she's managed to put into both the Pokemon and the flowers in the background is really, really lovely. And you can see that she's achieved a lot more with both of these cards than some of her earlier cards. Um, there's a lot more detail, a lot more interest, um, and a lot more depth into both of these, which is really lovely to see. Now, the Aromatisse from Unbroken Bonds is an introduction to a sort of new style of floral card that you start to see more of from Messiah as time goes on, and I like to think of it as kind of a flower frame. I really love looking at these cards because it's almost like you're peeking through at the Pokemon um, as it's doing something, minding its own business, and it's just kind of encased in flowers. Um, it, perhaps you're looking at it through the bushes, um, so it's kind of thinking it's got a bit of privacy. The Aromatisse looks like it's just kind of minding its own business to be completely honest. Um, I really love the color scheme of this one with the sort of mauve purples through to the yellows. It's a really gorgeous card um, and there's a few of her newer artworks that use that similar sort of style. So the Victini from Cosmic Eclipse is another one that is very similar using that kind of framing. It's just a really interesting and different kind of perspective. Um, similar to the Skitty in Darkness Ablaze. I think having that framing is really nice. Just kind of breaks up the kind of Pokemon art work that you're looking at and it allows the viewer to have a slightly different perspective which I really enjoy. Now if you've been following me for a while, especially if you watch me stream, twitch.tv slash Pokemon Breaks, um, you will know that I have a favorites binder where I just keep random assorted favorite Pokemon that I like to collect. Dedenne is one of those random favorites and the first Dedenne card, the card that made me think I would like to start collecting Dedenne was by Saya Surata. She illustrated this really sweet artwork for Unified Minds and I just absolutely love it. It looks like a little baby Dedenne. Um, it's just chilling out on a berry tree branch, having a little nibble. There's not a huge amount going on in the background, which I really like. I love the contrast because the card itself is mostly green. The artwork is mostly green, um, but it's a fairy type. So it's on a pink card. So it's, you've got this really gorgeous um, contrast between the card itself, the artwork, and then the Dedenne, obviously, and the berries sort of stand out really nicely. Um, it's, it's again, it's another one of those artworks where she's just conveyed the emotion and the intention of the Pokemon really well in this really simple way. You can see everything that's going on, but it still sort of stimulates your imagination and makes you wonder what that Dedenne is up to afterwards after his little snack. So cute. Now, further to my favorites binder, Saya also illustrated a few other of my absolute favorite Pokemon. Um, so Clefairy from Hidden Fates. I collect Clefairies, absolutely love them. This is a really gorgeous artwork. You can see Clefairy kind of reaching for the stars. I really love the color scheme in this one. Um, anything that's just focused on the muted purples, pinks, and blues is gonna sort of get my vibe. And I really love what she's done with the flowers in this one in particular. They almost look like she's used an inverted color scheme. Um, and it just really looks really nice for that sort of nighttime glow that she's going for. I think it's something really interesting, really different. And I love that card so much. Uh, in a very similar vein, she illustrated the Clefable for Vivid Voltage, which uses that exact same color scheme that I really like, the pink, purple, blue. It's really gentle on the eyes. You can see Clefable kind of reaching for the stars again. It's got this kind of quizzical, tentative look on its face. Looks like it's not quite sure what's going to happen next. Um, you can see the stars sort of shooting behind it. It's just another really gorgeous artwork of one of my absolute favorite Pokemon, and I'm really glad she got the opportunity to do that. 
I'll rattle off a couple of my other favorites. I'm sure that you've seen them. The Galarian Ponita from Sword and Shield is absolutely gorgeous. Again, you've got my favorite color scheme. It's a really, really sweet, beautiful artwork. Um, the Ponita itself has this really sweet expression on its face as well. It kind of looks like you've caught it off guard on a little bit of a journey. Um, you can see the Blissey the Alt Art from Chilling Rain was also illustrated by Saya. I absolutely love that card. Um, Blissey just looks like a grandma that's waiting for her grandson to come home. She's taken her slippers off. She's probably made him a snack. Um, she just looks so happy. I think she'd be the absolute perfect Pokemon to have in your party if Pokemon were real because I know that she'd always look after me. Um, the Ampharos from Evolving Skies. Again, I collect Ampharai. Um, and Ampharos looks like it's just having the time of his life in this card, just rolling around in a field of flowers. Again, you've got this beautiful meadow sort of artwork. You can see as Saya's style and probably the printing capabilities of Pokemon increase that there's a lot more detail in the artworks in the flowers, which is always really fun to see. The Jigglypuff from Fusion Strike was one of my earliest Pokemon card alters. I think it was actually the first Pokemon card that I picked up and thought, I really want to extend this and um, see what else I can do with it. And Saya did such an incredible job with that artwork itself. I really love how round Jigglypuff is and it kind of looks like the meadow is almost just warping around it. it. Makes me super curious to see what else is going on in that artwork and that was why I wanted to extend it. A few of my other favorites would have to be the Emolga from Crown Zenith. Again, really, really gorgeous floral background. Um, absolutely stunning. Had to go in my Emolga, my little electric mice <laughs> binder for sure. Um, and then the Sprigatito she illustrated for Scarlet and Violet is absolutely stunning. Very beautiful, detailed meadow. And again, the expressiveness on Sprigatito's face. Um, she looks expectant and I absolutely love it. I think that there's so much thought and love and um, just thoughtfulness that's gone into these artworks and these cards. And I would love to get a chance to talk to Saya and talk about her inspiration because I think it would be super interesting. Now, one of my absolute favorite things about doing these artist showcase videos is finding out more about cards that illustrators have created for Pokemon and that are of Pokemon that I probably would overlook or would not necessarily be my favorites. So scrolling through Saya's history of illustrations for Pokemon Company, there are a few cards that really stood out to me that made me, I guess, love and appreciate I would say underrated Pokemon a little bit more. She did the Rock Rough for Cosmic Eclipse, which is a really sweet artwork. Again, it's got that muted color scheme that I always really like, but to me, what it looks like is Rock Rough is just kind of chilling out in a pet store. He's kind of in a window and you can see there's shopping and other things going on in the background and he's kind of got one eye open. He's not that interested in what's happening. He looks pretty comfy and I can't really blame him. Saya illustrated a couple of cards for Vivid Voltage that I absolutely love. The Blitz Soul is a really gorgeous artwork. Again, it's using a slightly different color scheme to what you see from her a lot of the time. It's very sort of brown, black, blue with some pops of yellow. It is really stunning. Um, I think that the amount of detail she's put into the sky in this one is what really makes it an attractive card to me. And the detail she's put into the Blitzel and I think just this kind of expectant look on its face is really, really cool. Similarly, the Skiddo that she illustrated for Vivid Voltage is one of my absolute favorite artworks. It's one that I've set aside thinking I might like to alter at some point, but I just love how happy that little Skiddo is. The green color scheme will always draw me in. I love the detail in the flowers, um, the expressiveness of the Skiddo. It is just a super cute artwork and I absolutely love it. And Skiddo is not one of those Pokemon that I would sort of look to collect, but I just really love that artwork so much. Some of her more recent sort of meadow artworks would be the Sligoo from Fusion Strike, the Rabombi from Evolving Skies, and the Axew from Brilliant Stars. Again, these are all Pokemon that I wouldn't necessarily look to collect, but I absolutely love the artwork. They all look very happy, um, very excited to see you as a potential trainer. Um, I think the color schemes and the lighting that she's put into all of these is really, really attractive and pleasing to the eye. It looks 
just like sort of natural sunlight. Um, I think that her skill in terms of ability to create a living scene is really lovely and I love how much she uses flowers. I personally find them really beautiful. So I love those artworks so, so much. The Sunken from Silver, T Silver Tempest is another one of her artworks that was quite recent and really, really beautiful in terms of the flower meadow sort of vibe. I love how excited that little Sunkern is and that was one that I just had to alter and extend. I did that one a little while ago and I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Um, and the reason that I choose cards to alter is because I love the original artwork. I hope that no one ever feels like I'm doing it to make it better because that's not how I see it at all. One last Pokemon to discuss that I would typically overlook would have to be Magneton. She did a really gorgeous Magneton for Astral Radiance. Again, it's not a Pokemon that I would usually look to collect or be super excited about, but I love the artwork that she did. It's a gorgeous sunrise or sunset sky sort of scheme. The colors are really, really beautiful. Um, even though it's Magneton and it's a metal sort of machine type Pokemon, the amount of expression that she's managed to put into Magneton's face and its three eyes is just really, really cool. Um, you can see that the Magneton is kind of expectant. It looks a little bit surprised. I think it looks caught off guard and I love the lighting on the trees surrounding it and she's used that kind of cool framing effect which creates a very interesting perspective as well. Um, I think this is just one of those cool artworks that really sucks you into Pokemon world and I absolutely love it. I think she's done an incredible job. To wrap it up, I will touch on a couple of the really cool promotional cards that Saya has illustrated for the Pokemon Company. Um, you may have seen the Sun and Moon promos of Mimikyu and Pikachu. They are absolutely gorgeous. They fit together really nicely. I think the hollow on those cards is really cool. It uses a slightly different style to what she's done before, which I really like. Um, you've got this sort of almost blank looking bright hollow background with the Pokemon and some plants just in the foreground, which I think is really cool. It creates a lot of different contrast, which is nice. Um, she also illustrated all of the Yokohama promos. So when the Yokohama Pokemon Center opened up, they had four different promotional cards that came out. The theme, um, because Yokohama is kind of a beach destination, was all about like under the sea. So you've got a Pikachu sort of riding on a boat. Um, you've got three little Pikas. Um, I think they're welcoming visitors perhaps. <laughs> one's on a raft, one's in a submarine. They are so adorable. I definitely need to find and pick those up for my collection because they are just the cutest little things. Um, but she illustrated all of those and I think that she did an absolutely amazing job. And I love that they used the same illustrator for all four because it allowed that, um, that production to be really cohesive, which is really nice. Um, I think anyone that wanted to collect all four of those cards would be super stoked to have all of them in their binder because they fit together so nicely. They're really, really sweet. Um, and just coming up to upcoming sets, there's a couple of cards that have been revealed by Saya for Snow Hazard. So there's the Dun Dun Sparse, which is an AR card, which looks super cool. Dun Sparse has a new evolution. It's just a longer dance bars um, and you've got it interacting with these really cute little Dedenes on kind of a mountaintop. I love with this one how she's really utilized detail in the Pokemon themselves and not put a whole bunch of detail into the background. I think that's something that would be really easy to get away from you as an artist if you were creating like a very large artwork for a card. Um, I think it would be really easy to add too much detail and then people's eyes wouldn't necessarily know where to go when they're looking at the artwork. So I think with that one, she's done really well to focus on the Pokemon themselves um, and not put huge amounts of detail in the rocks and stuff in the background because it just keeps it focused. And I think it's really, really well done, really deliberate, and I love it. Um, she's also illustrated the mouse hold for Clay Burst, which is gonna come out before too long. Um, and they are super sweet as well. I think mouse hold is gonna be one of the cutest new Pokemon. I really love it. Um, you've got basically the little tandem mouse and then it uh, evolves by just multiplying which kind of makes sense given that it's mice, but the mousehold illustration she's done for that new set is looking really cute and I'm excited about it. So those are some of my favorite artworks by Saya Surata. She's been illustrating for Pokemon Company for quite some time, so we had a fair few things to talk about. I'm sorry if I overlooked some of your favorite cards. If I've missed anything, please leave them in the comments down below. I would love to go check it out. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to doing more of these Artist Showcase series videos. So if you have a favorite Pokemon artist or there's someone you think I should talk about, please let me know because I am really looking forward to doing some more. If you enjoyed this video, please leave this one a like. It means the absolute world to me. And if you'd like to see more from me, please subscribe. It helps me out a lot more than you realize. I make a new video every single week. We do unboxings, we do art videos, we do all sorts of stuff. So I'd love to see you next time. Until then, please look after yourself and I'll see you soon. Bye.